You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another fun episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. Thank you for joining us today on this beautiful day. I hope you are flying inspiring and staying grateful for what you have because oftentimes when you go out and fly others are stuck in a freaking cubicle sucking wind you don't want to be them do you (laughs) i didn't think so that's right and i'm rob in this episode number 834 and uh we need to go fly as a matter of fact i need some uh, we haven't done enough flying i need some medication for vacation man that is correct and thank you as always for hanging out with us today we do know you have a lot of options and you're with us, so we do appreciate that very much. Um, interesting question today. Some information about maybe some higher end drones, some more powerful drones. Some the power, the big guys. For those that want to maybe move past the P4 Pro stuff and even the Inspire stuff, yeah. if we can call it stuff. Stuff. If you don't mind calling no, it stuff. No, I, I don't mind. Let's just, let's just go right into it today, which is brought to you by our last or your last chance to sign up for the Drone You Fly In, just go to DroneUFlyIn.com. That's D R O N E U FlyIn.com. Sign up. Why? Well, because it's a conference where you're actually guaranteed about 12 hours of actual flight time, where you're tested on 12, excuse me, I almost misspoke, where you're tested on 10 different exercises and stations. Then you'll have the option to go to one of two different tracks of classes. You can learn how the NTSB uh, uses drones for accident reconstruction, or maybe you want to see the regulatory panel with Vic Moss, Kenji, who was on the show before, and Mr. John McBride and myself. Check it out. I mean, where else are you going to have this much fun? Have you given up on adventures and having fun? Someone yesterday called me, Rob, and they're like, you know what I'm calling the drone you flying? I said, what? He's like, a drone vacation. This was actually the guy from <laughs> Pix40. He's That's like, true. He's like, I'm so excited for this. And then someone else was like, you know what? I've just finally said I got, I've got the word for the fly-in. And I'm like, uh, I'm starting to get worried at this point. I'm like, oh, no, what is it? He's like, priceless. He's like, it's so much fun. The people you meet, the fun times you have. Yeah, you learn from the missions, but you also learn from other people and you realize that, hey, I'm making the same mistakes other people are making and that's normal and that's okay. And that propels us forward. In fact, the reason we have so many open spots still is because so many people who went to the fly-in last year are doing so well in their business, they cannot make it this year. And you know what? That's kind of an awesome problem to have. It is an awesome problem to have. And we have a ton of fun putting it on as far as the actual events and just making sure all the folks that are there are taken care of. They're having a great time. They have everything they need. Food's good. Water's good. Power's good. Everything's ready. And all you need to do is show up, learn, talk to your buddies, make new buddies, fly, fly better, be educated, and just have a fantastic time. It's really cool. Philosophize. That's right. A little bit of that too. Anyway. All right. Well, let's Let's get to today's question. Familiar name and voice you're going to hear. Paul, hey Rob, Kevin, New Jersey. I realized the last time I submitted a question, it was like two minutes long, so I'm going to try to keep this one short. M600 with a Ronin MX and a DSLR mounted on it. Can you map with it? Is Pix4D mapper or capture going to be able to fly the drone, trigger the shutter on the camera, and collect the images to put together later for photogrammetry? I've seen various things online that dispute whether or not it would work with a DSLR, but you guys would know more than anybody else, I'm assuming. So that's just the bottom line, simple question. Can you do it? Yes or no? Thanks. Ken, thank you again and again and again for all your great questions. Um, Probably a lot of people out there that actually have a DSLR and would love to know the answer to this question because it's something they could deploy and put into use right away, I would imagine. And, you know, it's one of those things that, look, when you get in these bigger drones, there's a lot more that goes into them. They're not as turnkey and as ready to go as what you're used to with the Phantom of Mavic and Inspire. And a lot of people fail to to realize that it takes longer to do their jobs. You know, is the data really worth it? The data is worth it if you are flying the right camera. And it is true that people are having difficulty getting certain autonomous applications 
to do mapping missions with certain hexacopters and certain cameras. For example, for a long time, even at CES, I think it was, um, it wasn't phase one. There was another camera maker, large format camera maker. Hasselblad, was it Hasselblad? I can't remember if it was Hasselblad or phase one. And they were at CES last year and they were showing their new 100 megapixel camera. And they had this exact problem. Like, it, I can't get the shutter to fire. Right. Like, you know, like I got to do the mission. It's just got to take the picture. That basic little thing <laughs> yeah. still has to happen. So I know that problem is fixed now. And I know that on the A7R Mark III and the A7R III, the 6300, the 6500, and the 6000 all do work on the Ronin MX with an M600. Now, an S1000 and an S800 will not work with things like Pix4D, uh, Maps Made Easy, Ground Station Pro. Uh, the M600 will, and it's a plug-and-play, which makes it hmm. really, really easy. So that's Very why cool. the M600 with you know, the A7R Mark III or the A7 III is really like the ultimate mapping drone. I mean, look at the Intel Falcon 8 Plus. It's pretty much an A7R Mark III with an octocopter, you know, facing a certain direction. So hmm. it's one of those systems that's the closest that you're going to get to plug and play without it being plug and play. Okay, so let's just say someone wants to get into mapping and they're going to buy a P4P or V2. They're going to get if extra getting... batteries, 2500 bucks for all that. What's it going to cost to get into something like this and, and why would you want to do that? Okay, so first of all, the Phantom 4 Pro version 2 does not work with Pix4D yet. or Yet, but it should soon, right? It, it should soon, yes. We're looking at four grand for an M600. Every set of batteries that we fly, so every 30 minutes of flight time is going to cost us $900 for a set of batteries. On top of that, we're looking at three to $4,000 for the camera, depending on what camera it is. Now, the a7 III, which is Sony's new full-frame format uh, camera, is only $2,000. is the camera I was telling you about, mm -hmm. but it's only 24 megapixels. Versus the a7R Mark III, same sensor, it's 42 megapixels. Hmm. Well, which camera is better for mapping? I even called Pix4D and asked them the question, and they're like, well, I've seen great results from both. It's like, well, that doesn't answer the question. Which, one, which one's the best? <laughs> you know? Yeah, uh, and so to answer that question, we're going to do the same test that we did for the Unique and the Phantom 4 Pro. Okay. And we're going to go test these things and find out. Okay, so we at this point, then we have to say we still don't know if it'd be worth all that extra money. It's worth all that extra money if you are doing things like National Geographic and you want to, uh, you know, build a, a new model of the Holy Sepulchre Church. Okay. Then, yeah, you're going to make probably 800 grand doing it. You know, um, the th okay, so let's go back to pricing. Sorry, I switched track. Four grand for the drone. Camera's going to be two to three grand, probably four. Um, Batteries four are a lot Four more. grand for the drone does not include the MX. You're going to probably end up spending seven grand, seven to $8,000 for the, for the uh, M600 if you do get it with the Ronin MX. Batteries, the case is another $1,000, okay? So Ronin MX, M600, seven grand camera. Let's say on the low end, we're at 10 grand now. We have not bought a case or extra batteries. Okay, so hmm. now we're at like 15 grand. Yikes. Okay? So let's say we get four sets of batteries in a case, we're at 15 grand. Mm -hmm. All right. Killing but me. the thing is, is that the quality of the data that we acquire is magnitudes of scale better. So this is going to be not only better for accuracy, but it's also going to be better for doing the one thing that's very, very difficult with photogrammetry, which is having extremely beautiful models that are also accurate. Okay. Because the margin of error in models that are made from mostly oblique imagery is is astounding. It's huge. Okay. So, so this could go a long way towards that survey grade level of data as well, right? And survey grade is possible. Uh, you know, we have a question that asks, what is survey grade? And we actually got all the definitions from ASPRS and, uh, you know, did some dig some digging, and you're going to hear that show soon. But you can get, quote unquote, survey grade. So when I'm saying survey grade, I mean a surveyor signs off on this on this map that was made by a drone and the surveyor is licensed by the department of whatever in whatever state that is certified by the federal government. That's when I say it's survey grade. And we're working with someone right now who is doing, what, what is it now? Like they have 15 teams doing like, what is it? 250 surveys per day, per day. 
with phantoms. Right. Okay. You want these bigger drones? If you're doing maps of like, like I, w- I wish I would have had this for mapping the MLB stuff. Mm. I really wish I would have had that. Right. It's also really good to map larger areas because you don't need as much data because the images are so big. That's another thing is mm. is, is that we can also scale our operations with these bigger drones. That's an interesting point. Yeah. Let that camera get you that the others don't. Yep. Very Not cool. only that, now we have an M600. Now we can fly LiDAR. We don't okay. have to spend $200,000 on a drone that someone spent ten grand building. You know? I mean, obviously, the two hundred grand covers the LiDAR sensor, too, but that's only seventy-five grand. Anyway. It's good to know we don't have to spend two hundred grand. Well, Rob. I'll sleep better tonight. Pull out the checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was going to um, use that on a trip Do you think I did a, a good job of answering his question? Look, if we want to yeah, make totally. super beautiful models that you see on, like, the Microsoft commercials... That they're like, we're using AI to create models of places. I'm like, I don't understand how you're using AI. Where's the machine learning in photogrammetry? I think they're using buzzwords for marketing. Yeah, because I think it sounds so cool too. and it looks cool. Yeah, well, and it makes people buy. They should Microsoft just shut stuff. down all the fake Apple stores too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, but anyway, not um, going to happen. No, I think yeah. He was just asking, is it possible? Is it a good solution? And it sounds like uh, the answer to both is yes. Yeah, your, your missions are going to be a, a lot shorter, uh, but it's going to take more time to get them set up. Okay, so just be clear. The level of data is astronomically higher. Um, it's very good for larger areas. You're mapping larger areas, carrying multiple payloads. Um, in addition to that, the level of beauty in your models will be astronomically high. So, I mean, if you're doing cell phone tower mapping and you need to really uh, get crazy detail on information, this is a great example of, mm-hmm. of how it would, it would help. But after uh, having a, a pallet or two of cell phone antennas sent to us, um, I've come to find out that most people can just get a map of like a basic phantom map of a cell phone tower and know just by the size of the antenna what kind of antenna it is. Yeah. Didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Things you learn in cool. drone mapping. Fun stuff. Anyway. All right, guys. That's going to do it for us today. We've already bored Rob to death, and he's already lost all his hair. The world is ending. Not really. He's excited. He doesn't have to comb it tomorrow morning. And on that <laughs> bombshell, that's going to do true. it for us today. I'm Rob. <laughs> I'm Paul. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>